All right, so looking at number 10. <clears throat> now, please remember that yesterday I said that there are two ways of uh, graphing these absolute values, okay? Two ways that I want you to worry about. One was plotting points. The other was using the slope of the right side, right? Both methods, you need to find your vertex first, okay? So your vertex is always located at these two numbers, right? This is your x, this is your y variables. But remember, what's the little phrase we have to remember here? x is hexed, y is y's. So therefore, our vertex is located where? Positive 2, 3. Positive 2, 3. X is hexed, Y is Y's. Okay? Um, if you're going through, I'm going to talk about plotting points first. Remember, there's two methods. Plotting points will, will work for you, okay? If you decided to plot points, I know that some people like that method better, um, what you need to do is you need to center your points around the vertex. Okay? You need to center your points around the vertex. We need to make sure that that is the center of where we're checking so that we can see both sides of the V, right? Remember we had that issue the first day where we'd only be plotting points and see one side and it looked like a line. Well, we want to see the whole V, so we've got to center around the vertex. The other thing is, is I want to make my life as easy as possible, okay? So I want to go through and work with some friendly numbers, meaning if I say I plugged in uh, 5 for x, if I plugged in 5 for x, what's 5 minus 2? Hello, yes, it's 3, okay. 3, what's the absolute value of 3? 3. 3, and what's negative 1 fourth times 3? Negative three fourths. I don't want to take negative three fourths plus three, and I got to worry about common denominators, and I got to worry about graphing that point. Okay? I don't want to do that. I want to get rid of the negative one fourth when I go through and plug in for x. So what I want to do is I want to multiply negative one fourth times a number that is divisible by four, meaning I want to multiply it by say zero because that would get rid of one fourth, right? I want to multiply it by 4, because that would get rid of 1 fourth. I want to multiply it by 8. That would get rid of 1 fourth, right? So I want the stuff that's inside my absolute values to equal 0, 4, and 8, or negative 4 and negative 8. All right? So looking at our vertex, if we go to 2, 3, we have our axis of symmetry at x equals 2, because remember the axis of symmetry is always the line that passes through our vertex. So it has this, it's the same value as our x-coordinate of our vertex. And so right here is our axis of symmetry. And when I'm picking values to the right of my vertex, I don't want to pick 3. Okay? What would I want to pick instead? What would make x minus 2 equal 8, or equal 4, or equal something that's easy to work with. Well, 2 minus 2 is 0, but we already have that point. That's 3. So try 6. If x is 6, or if x is 10, because 10 minus 2 is 8. Right? Again, these are our friendly numbers here. That's what we want to try to get. How about to the uh, uh, left of our vertex? I want to plug in negative 2. Because negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 is divisible by 4. I want to plug in um, negative 6. Negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 is divisible by 4. The whole point of this, if you're wanting to plot points, which, by the way, it'll work, but is it the quickest way of graphing these things? No, it's not the quickest. Okay? But if you're someone who you, that's the way you want to do it because you know how to plot points, then by all means, do it this way. But give yourself a chance by getting some, some easier numbers to graph. 
You want this stuff inside the absolute value to be divisible by 4. Why? Because I'm multiplying by 1 fourth. Okay? So if I plugged in those values, what's 10 minus 2? 8. Absolute value of 8 is 8. Negative 1 fourth times 8. It's negative 2. What's negative 2 plus 3? 1. All right, 6 minus 4. I'm sorry, 6 minus 2 is 4. Uh, absolute value of 4? Four? 4. 4 times negative 1 fourth. Negative 1 plus 3. 2. Negative 1 plus 3. Okay, negative 2 minus 2. Negative 4. Absolute value of negative 4. 4. 4 times negative 1 fourth. Negative 1. Negative 1 plus 2. 2. And if I plug in negative 6, we'll cut to the chase. I'm going to get 1. Okay? <clears throat> so I can plot those points. All right? But I'm not going to plot those points at the moment because the second method that we would use is just the slope method. You've still got to find your vertex, but then you say that A is negative 1 fourth. A is the right side slope. And so from your vertex, all you do is count a slope of down 1 to the right 4. Brings us to a point at 6, 2. Oh, by the way, 6, 2 is one of the points we were going to plot. You mirror that to the other side. You mirror that to the other side, so this point is 4 units away from the axis of symmetry, so we need another point 4 units away from the axis of symmetry. Brings us right there, which is at negative 2, 2. Oh, wait a minute, that point's right there, negative 2, 2. Down 4, or down 1, left 4, brings us here. Negative 6, 1. Okay, and there's our graph. So counting the slope is much faster, but it's not the only way to do it. If you're going to plot points, help yourself out and pick friendly numbers. Okay? Questions on 10? Now, if you didn't want to pick friendly numbers, it would still work. But you're going to end up having to graph fractions, which is not nearly as easy or fun. Okay? Any other questions? Any other problems you want to see? Yes, ma'am. Nine. <clears throat> okay, for number nine, I'm just going to do it the uh, uh, quick way, which is the slope, right? So the first thing we need to do, now please remember, the general form of an absolute value function is y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. The vertex is located at h k, right? Well, looking at our problem, I could rewrite that saying y equals one-half times the absolute value of x. Is there anything added to that? No. no, so I could just say plus zero. And is there anything added at the end? No, so I could just say plus zero. So where's my vertex? Zero, zero. zero. Okay. A is one-half. So again, remember, that's the right side slope. So all we need to do is go to 0, 0. I would like you to draw in your axis of symmetry, which goes vertically through the vertex. Remember that our axis of symmetry is the vertical line, x equals wherever it crosses the x-axis, which is always going to be the x-coordinate of your vertex. And then on the right side, count a slope of 1 half. Remember, slope is rise over run. So we've got to go up 1, right 2. And I just keep going up 1, right 2. And then all we need to do is fold that to the other side. Okay, you can just mentally fold it. You don't actually have to pick up your piece of paper. But that's what we're doing. We're folding it over, and every point then gets mirrored to the other side. Questions? <clears throat> Again, please ask if you don't know what's going on here. If you have any questions. Anything else I can do for you?
Any other problems you want to see worked out? Number seven? Sure. All right, looking at number seven. Um, and number seven, what's our A value? One. Yeah, there's no number out in front of there, so it can't be a zero, because if I took zero times an absolute value, that whole thing would go away, right? So it's a one sitting out in front there. And we need to find our vertex, okay? But remember the little phrase, x is hexed, y is y's. So therefore, our x coordinate is what? Negative two. Our y coordinate is positive three. Our axis of symmetry is located where? x equals negative 2. Write the entire equation. I'm ready to have you guys write that down because that's going to be a question on your tests and quizzes. Is given this equation, what's the axis of symmetry? And you have to write the entire equation to get it correct. Okay, the equation of that line is x equals negative 2. So make sure you write that down. So x equals negative 2 is this line right here. Our vertex is at negative 2, 3. And you guys told me the slope of the right side is 1, which means 1 over 1. So rise of 1, run of 1. And all we've got to do is fold that to the other side. <coughs> Questions? Anything else you'd like to see? Number 11. Okay, number 11 will be our last one from this assignment quick. Um, so first off, if we're graphing this, we've got to know where our vertex is. Okay, so our vertex is going to be negative 1, negative 4, right? X is hexed. Right? So negative 1, negative 4. Our A value is what? A is negative 2. A is negative 2. And our axis of symmetry is, how do I write it though? x equals negative 1. Yes. Got to give me the equation of the whole line. So x equals negative 1 sits right here. Our vertex, negative 1, negative 4, is right there. And the slope of the right side is negative 2. So how do I count a slope of negative 2? Rise over run. Rise over run means I'm going down to over, over is which way? Right. To the right one. So from my vertex, I go down to right one. Okay, mirror those to the other side, which means down to left one. And there's our graph. Any questions? Okay, first and last name at the top, turn those in. All right, so one example I want to do is when writing equations of absolute values. We did this as the last example yesterday in our notes. I want to do another one just to make sure we're all on the same page here. So let's say I have this graph. Let's go there and let's have it go up like this. Okay, so if that's our graph, I want to write the equation of that absolute value function. So a few things we need to do. First off, we just need to know what is the general form of the equation of an absolute value function. 
And so if you look in your notes, you'll see that that's y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. Okay, remember that the vertex is located at hk and that a is our right side slope. Right? Well, that's the only information we need in order to write the equation of this absolute value. So, looking at the graph, where's the vertex? Negative 2, 1. Please remember, it's always x-coordinate first, then y-coordinate. All right? So, our vertex is at negative 2, 1. And how are we going to get the slope of the right side? It's going to be rise over run. We have to do what to actually get it? Count. count. Yeah, we just got to count. So from one point to the next point, make sure you're going to the right. Don't do stuff to the left. It's the right side slope. Well, sorry, for you guys, it's over here. It's the right side slope, okay? So I'm going to go up one, and I go to the right three. So I have a rise of one, a run of three. So then that's our A values, one third. Great. All we need to do is plug that in to our equation now. So y equals a, which is one-third, times the absolute value of x. Now, are, yeah, exactly, I was going to ask. Are we doing plus 2 or minus 2? Plus 2 is the opposite. Plus 2 because x is hexed. It has to be opposite what we're saying here. So if our uh, vertex is at negative 2 for the x-coordinate, our equation has to say plus 2. And then plus 1 at the end. And there we go. Questions on that? Feeling pretty good about doing that? Let's try another one. Just to make sure. What if I give you... Let's go right here. And... Let's make it like this. Okay, so there's our graph. I would like you guys to take a moment and try to write the equation of this graph. You can discuss it with the neighbors around you. We should first be finding our vertex. Please remember, all points are listed x-coordinate first, so this should be at 3, 0. And now we need to find the slope of the right side. So the slope of the right side, I'm going to start counting from my vertex. I go down, 1, 2, 3. So my slope of the right side is going to be negative 3 over, I go to the right, 1, 2. Negative 3 over positive 2. So the general form is y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. So plugging into that, a is negative 3 halves times the absolute value of x. Now am I going to say plus 3 or minus 3? Minus. minus 3 because x is hexed. It has to be opposite what we have going on up there. And then, do I need to write plus zero at the end? No. no, I don't need to. So there's our equation. Um, counted wrong, no, but it, it's kind of a redundant thing. Please try to get past doing that, okay? Any other questions on problems like this? Okay, then I have another type of problem I want you guys to look at. Again, we talked about this yesterday briefly. I want to make sure you have another good example of it. What if um, I have the equation y equals the absolute value of negative 2x plus 6 plus 2? And I want to graph that. 
There is an issue here. The issue is every problem that we've worked, if you happen to look back at um, our standard form, or general form, out in front of the X inside there is a 1, right? A positive 1. We don't want that coefficient of X to be anything other than positive 1. Well, the problem with what we're dealing with here is that the coefficient of X is negative 2. Now remember, I'm talking about inside the absolute value, not outside the absolute value, right? Okay, so what we need to do then is we need to factor out a negative 2. Keep it inside the absolute values, though. Keep it inside the absolute value. So we have y equals the absolute value of negative 2 times, well, then what's left inside? x Plus, uh, minus, minus 3. Okay? And the reason we want to do that is, again, yesterday I told you guys about a rule from algebra that says the absolute value of a times b is equal to the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b. Okay? Well, that's exactly what we want to do here. We want to break that up and say we've got y equals the absolute value of negative 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3. Well, what is the absolute value of negative 2? 2. two. two. So we have y equals 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 2. This equation we can now graph. Bless you. Again. We can now graph that. Where's our vertex located? 3, 2. And what's the slope of the right side? 2 over 1, or just 2. Yep. So, graph your vertex, 3, 2. Please draw in your axis of symmetry as well. It always goes vertically through your vertex. And now on the right side of our vertex, we count a slope of 2 over 1. So up 2, right 1. And we need to mirror all those points to the other side. Questions? Yes, sir. Well, okay. Like, what happens if there's, like, it's, like <coughs> just use this problem example. And if that negative was never there, and we had, like, two, the absolute value of 2x plus 6. Then you would just so factor out a positive 2. Just factor it out in the same, same thing. It's the exact, you still have to do the exact same work. Yeah. Okay, it's just here you're going to have a positive 2, which means yeah. down here you're taking the absolute value of a positive, positive 2, which is, still two. which is still 2. Okay. Yep. Uh, okay. That's yep. Awesome. Good questions. Anything else? Let's do another one of those. Let's do another one of those. What if we have y equals negative 2 times the absolute value of negative 3x minus 6 plus 1. Looking inside the absolute value, what do we have to change? What do we have to get rid of in there? Negative that negative 3. We don't want the coefficient of x being negative 3. So we've got to factor out a negative 3. Y equals negative 2 times the absolute value of negative 3 times x. And then what are we left with inside? Plus 2. Remember, you're factoring from both terms. Right? Okay. Well, now we can break that absolute value apart. Y equals negative 2 times the absolute value of negative 3 times the absolute value of x plus 2 plus 1. What's the absolute value of negative 3? What's negative 2 times 3? Negative 
So there we go. That is the equation that we then know how to graph. Our vertex is located where? Negative 2, 1. And our right side slope is what? Negative 6 over 1. Or you just say negative 6. Yep. All right. So our axis of symmetry is x equals negative 2. Our vertex is at negative 2, 1. And the slope of the right side is negative 6 over 1. So I've got to count down 6 to the right 1. So we're going to have, yep, a very skinny graph. We mirror all those to the other side. And our graph will look like that. Questions? No? Feeling good? Yep. Doing all right? Beautiful. Let's try some homework. <laughs>